To start, I would like to introduce Tidi, who will be hosting our session today. Well, Tidi is a collaborator in chief at TechnoVision, co-founder of the Lagos Angel Network and president at the African Business Angel Network. In 2000, he shifted his focus to Africa, where he helped create the African Agriculture Technology Foundation, led the One Laptop Per Child initiative in Nigeria, and deliver a World Bank pilot of the integrated payroll and personal information system that uncover over 20,000 ghost workers in the Nigerian government payroll system. Leading this kind of initiative in Africa using goal-oriented approach to project delivery, which consistently deliver effective results, inspire his book in 2014 called The African Project Manager. TD is a chairman of Tex Nigeria and non-executive director and MOB Capital and Big Cabal Media. He's a member of the Lagos State Science Research and Innovative Council, and he sits on the board of Laptop for Learning Nigeria and the Global Business Angel Network. As a thought leader with increasing knowledge, gaining from nurturing entrepreneur in the growing portfolio of tech-enabled early stage business venture originating from Africa, TD personal mission is to help drive African by supporting young entrepreneurs like yourself, using innovative and technology to create social impact and economic value. TD News book called Investment Worthy Startup is out, in case you don't know. And Investment Worthy, in the words of David Rose, is the book you need to read if you want to learn how to build a viable startup company in Africa that can attract funding from angel investors and venture capital firm. Tidi, it's a great honor to have you with us today. The floor is yours. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. As Fadila read you all that stuff, I'm just TD. It's very simple. Just call me TD. And what I'm hoping we do today is sort of just get a feel for things catalytic. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, what is Catalytic Africa? And really, it's a matching fund, okay, by ABAN and Afri Labs, okay, to strengthen our early stage ecosystem. Now, what are the objectives? What are we aiming to do? The first is, you know, we, I, and the people around me believe that, okay, angel networks and innovation hubs combined create a very powerful economic development force. So it's about strengthening them. But why are we strengthening them? Well, it's so that we can increase the investment that local angel investors make in startups like yourselves. That's the whole point, because we want to show that we in Africa can actually initiate our own development. And that's something a lot of people don't get. So that will mean funding startups that are innovative, okay? Especially those with digital solutions. I know I'm partial, you heard my background. I'm a tech guy, I make no apologies for it because I just believe we're using tech to create a better future for us all. So the final piece, is really making sure we have reliable data. Everybody says, oh, Africa, it's high risk. We don't have data. So those are the things we're aiming to do with Catalytic. And how are we doing that? Well, we co-invest with angel networks that are investing into startups like the ones you're going to be hearing from today. And if you're one of them, like yourselves, you're going to be telling us a fair bit about yourselves. So question is, how does it work? Well, we've got a six-step process that all the startups you'll be hearing from today are in the middle of. Note my word, in the middle of, and I'll come back to that because what are the steps? The first is registration. If you can't register, if you don't register, you're not going to get it far. But once you're registered and you have all the things it takes, then it's about an application. The team then gets to review the application. 
And this is where a lot of people get stuck. We do KYC, okay? Because we're out to set standards above and beyond the mediocre. And we want to be sure that when our international partners take a look, then we are credible. And we do that prior to disbursement. But disbursement is not the end. Post-disbursement, which is why we partner with the hubs, there's reporting. Remember, I talked about data and I said I'd come back to it. That's where the data comes from. Sessions like this and the reporting you guys have been doing month on month so that we understand the landscape and what the dynamics are and what is happening there. All right. So what have we done so far? Well, as you can see, we've disbursed some matching funds. Some are still pending. Some of you guys haven't got your money yet, probably because you haven't finished KYC or you're not that far in the process. But by and large, when we launched, we launched last year, we've had over 1,200 registrations. There are over 500 hubs that are working with us. And that means about 400 odd startups. We've got over 60 angel networks and over 150 angel investors on the platform itself. And what that's meant is we've actually concluded nine co-investment deals. What does that look like in terms of numbers of what we've actually given out? Well, startups have got over 400K euros, so probably about half a million dollars. And the hubs, okay, who receive money so that they can do the reporting post and sort of to ensure that relationship have also received over 50,000 um, people like myself, you know, and, and our networks who uh, are perceived as having money, even though we're trying to help. Well, angel networks have also got some change to help with the administrative overhead. So this is sort of a picture of what we've done um, so far. So in terms of what this all means and who's benefited, what they're doing, how they're doing it, but more importantly for me, what kind of impact they're having uh, given the funding. And that's why we're here today. That's what I want to hear from each and every one of you is what kind of impact has the fund hand on, have on you and what's happening as a, a result. I trust that helps. It's quite quick because I want to be sure that we focus on the people who are the stars of today. Those are the startups that are working off creating jobs on the continent and having an impact based on their SDGs. Hi, everyone. Once more, I'm Victor Maina. I run a company known as Duka. Uh, Duka is a B2B marketplace that connects mom and pop shops um, in the mass market to manufacturers. What I mean by that is that um, we have an application where we can, where customers can download and our customers are the mom and pop shop owners. They can now download that app, see the products that have been listed by the 48 manufacturers that you're working with. Um, get the feel of the product by looking at the pictures, um, the price as well. It's a competitive pricing. And then we um, organize logistics for them by connecting 3PL, which is the second app, which allows people who have vehicles and are looking for jobs to come and um, source for jobs in Duka, and they'll pick those products and deliver. Of course, we take them through a process of vetting before we allow them to work for us or rather work with us. Um, and so the customer is a key one, which is the mom and pop shop, the manufacturer is a key partner, and the drivers who are the three PLs are also a key partner. Over time, we can also provide financing for them. Uh, that is these mom and pop shops. We started in 2021, beginning off. Um, we, the main reason we started is that we have a bias of people who are living under $2 a day. According to the World Bank, there are 490 million Africans living in this space. And so these are the ones who are shopping every day. The transactions they're running is a billion dollars in consumer transactions daily. And you want to tap into that opportunity. Um, since inception, we've done more than $10 million in sales. But last year was our biggest one. The previous year, we did about almost $2 million. Last year, we did $9.7 million. This year, we have an ambitious target of $33 million, which then sets us to raising our funds in 2024. Um, we have a team of 57 um, and 33 that are currently uh, not contractual, not working with us permanent, but the 57 of them are permanent. Uh, we also are in Kenya, but currently planning to, uh, to, to expand to Madagascar this year. 
And so catalytic fund was very important for us when we re, you know when we got the funding last year to support us in that growth that then um, would set us uh, you know apart in terms of getting partners that can engage. It also gave us very good marketing out there. I think many, quite a number of people that didn't know us got to know about us. And um, so as we expand, it's going to be an important aspect of our business to um, both market us as it has, but also more important, the money was also important to push the business forward. So that's it. I think my time should be that over is, by now. That was awesome, Victor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, um, Victor, when when you applied um, for the matching grant, you had 42 employees. You're telling us you now have 57. So you've grown 15 people in that period. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. So 15 new jobs created. That's impressive. Thank now, you. Um, you talked about SDG 10, 8, and 1. Mm -hmm. Can you give us any examples of, you know, how Duke is sort of assessing any of these just very, very quickly? Yes, one on reduced inequalities, um, what we're doing is that we're able to take products up to a reduced um, cost of 10% to the mass market. By so doing, what we feel we are doing is that we are helping that dollar to go far than it, should, it would have gone you know, previously. On the, uh, you know, gender empowerment and especially focusing on women, we did a research, we did a research and also a survey we've been taking, 66% of our customers are women. So what we've done is, for example, right now, as we speak, 52% of, of, of our workforce at Duke is, is, is women. And we want them to be the ones who are pushing that agenda of what you're doing at Duke because the majority of customers are the ones you're serving. And of course, on economic empowerment, the drivers that previously did not probably have jobs can now get jobs in terms of uh, coming to the platform, applying for jobs, and you know we're able to create employment that way. And the impact can be so much because one person is able to take care of five family members easy. Fantastic. Before you disappear, I've got a question. Oh, by the way, if you have questions, do do what Laurent has done. Please put them in chat. So, Victor, the question is this, 927K, 9.7 million in sales, impressive, okay, uh, given your model. Can you share how you achieve this? Yes. So, we we make about 14%, um, you know, about that into 14% in terms of commissions. We, our biggest commission earner is, uh, we have three verticals, we have FMCG, we have cold chain, which is the meats, and we have pharma, which is medicine. So our FMCG product doesn't make much. We would probably get about 5% from that on a good day. Um, but then it goes to cold chain and pharma, which cold chain can easily give you about 20, 21%, and pharma, 31%. So combined, we're able to uh, get an average of 14, that into 14%. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much, Victor. You are very much appreciated, and I'm glad you're part of the catalytic uh, portfolio. Right. Thank you, TD, and the team. Yep. Thank you. Next up, we have Mr. Afifi. Hazem, are you here? Yes, sir. I'm here. Fantastic. Okay. Good morning, everyone. A pleasure to, to meet all of you. Uh, so my name is Hazem Afifi. Actually, I'm from Egypt. Uh, however, I'm operating in Tanzania. Uh, my background is from electronics engineering. I have started my professional career from the uh, semiconductor industry. Then from semiconductor industry, I directly moved to supply chain in Africa. So actually, it was a very challenging and it was a very promising as well, uh, uh, providing the, the very big market uh, we can see in, in supply chain. So actually, Summit is building a, a seamless connection between the suppliers and informal retailers where we found a big gap between both of them. Each, each party has is suffering from uh, some pain points. From the uh, informal retailer point of view, as you can see, it's a very small Lucas, uh, which is the operate under a very low uh, working capital. So they need a support from the financial point of view. They don't have a staff, so they need um, uh, an easy way to, to re, 
uh, restock their uh, their their supplies. Uh, from the, the the other side, the supply point of view, the they, they lack a lot of market insights. They lack uh, any information about the credibility of the customers. So uh, summit here is to make this connection between the two parties. Uh, we depend mainly on the on the data. So we collect, as you said, uh, TD, uh, how is Africa is really lacking from uh, the data point of view. Uh, so we 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 build a lot of uh, pool of data uh, for now, and actually, which allows us now to provide a buy now pay later to many of our customers. Um, uh, the, the some learning points we have got from the market is uh, the instability of the supply is one of the main uh, issues that uh, Africa is really facing every day. Uh, so we have through our data analysis, we have found uh, a couple of uh, a couple of products which we can we, we we start ready to create our own private label. So we started with Expedu is an insecticide killer, uh, and it is a very very uh, important uh, type of goods which uh, has a very uh, direct health impact uh, in the market. As you can know, malaria is one of the uh, what's facing in the market. So we've already launched this since 2023, uh, and uh, for now we are providing all of our customers uh, um, a, a payment facility through our uh, Expedia. Uh, we started since 2021. Uh, we have grown uh, almost 10x um, from the, our initial value. We've exceeded 3,000 customers in Tanzania in Dar es Salaam only, as we operate only in Dar es Salaam at the moment. And uh, because of the, uh, the the current competition, we can see uh it, the, the 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 area is a bit crowded but we try to innovate in in many uh, other directions so we do a retention rate of 40 percent somehow even more on a monthly basis wow. however we are focusing we are focusing more on our unit economics and we are expecting to uh on a peak even point and boost cash flow in the next six months yeah thank you wow. has um Thank you. You're just in Dar es Salaam and you're employing 18 people already? Yeah. Wow. I can't imagine what you got in store next. If you've got questions for Hazem, please type them in chat. Um, my question for you, Hazem, is um, you work with Innovate Ventures, is that correct? Yeah, that's true. What was that like? Yeah, so actually, uh, in 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 Tanzania, we are still in the early stages for the ecosystem. So all the ecosystem partners is trying to help each other to um, drag more and more um, directions to to help to 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 get the the dust out of of of, of Tanzania from the, the the startup ecosystem point of view. Uh, so me and Francis and even Sacho from Espan, we're trying to. To collaborate together to 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 do the much better and in, in, in a more innovative um, ideas and and ways to uh, to overcome what we what we still exploring on the market, uh, mm -hmm. but we are very close to each other to find more ways to to co collaborate. Um, even I'm trying also to find some bridges between Tanzania and Kenya as well, so we can uh, have the, the 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 knowledge transfer from here and there. And we can see even how the uh, the cooperation cooperation can be done uh, through the two countries. As uh, we can consider Kenya is the hub of East Africa, we would like also Tanzania to be one of the leading uh, in this uh, region as well. Fantastic, Victor, you're on notice. I hope you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, clear. <laughs> Fine. Thanks a lot, Hazem. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, moving on. Setebe, are you here? Oh, yes, I'm here. Fantastic. Good morning, all. <clears throat> I just have a bit of a cold. Um, good morning, TD and Fadilat and all. Um, so just as an introduction, um, with Go Smart Value, our entire goal is to bring technology into real estate. We're basically removing the guessing and the gut feel um, for a lot of investors, the financiers um, in real estate. The whole goal is to make um, to meet our customers at a point of need, particularly the financial institutions, in order to extend um, financing, a bit more financing in terms of real estate um, across the continent. 
we are mainly practicing in or mainly operating in Botswana. Um, and fortunately for the past year, it's been a great, um, a great and tedious year. Um, getting into um, bed with a lot of financial institutions. And one of our great achievements is um, partnerships with um, banks that are across the continent. So where we are now is quite an interesting phase where um, we are already starting to do a lot of the um, the onboarding and starting to see a bit of a difference um, in terms of how uh, we are assisting the banks and um, introducing new products. So now we are introducing um, payments of rates, um, rates and all of these um, legal tax levies and all of these things to government. So they'll be paid through us. Um, in terms of our organization, we have increased our staff. When we when we got the funding, I think there was two or three of us in the team. Um, and then now we are back to 13 people um, working in Botswana and across the um, in different parts of the world as we do work um, remotely. Our revenue has increased significantly by 21% um, year to date this time last year versus um, this year. And our major milestone, as um, I've already said before, for our partnerships with the banks. We're very excited about um, what we are doing um, right now and we are looking forward to going into the rest of the continent. Wow. That's it. Thanks, Tebe. Can you, can you share with us what's it been like working you know, with Angel Network Botswana? Um, okay, so Angel Network Botswana has been quite supportive. Um, we work very closely together in terms of, even when it com comes to meetings, um, we have one of the angels that's sitting in our board, so they're very close to what is happening um, in our business, providing a lot of advisory, um, I wouldn't say services, but rather um, offering more of their time in terms mm -hmm. of advising us. Um, we deal a lot with corporates, um, which is not an easy thing as a startup, especially in a very, very early stage um, tech environment. Um, so we need a lot of lobbying and the angels do a lot of that. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, how has the Catalytic Africa Fund helped Go Smart Value? Because I know you've been, you've been at this for, what, 14 odd years? <laughs> um, uh, well, sort of it's exploded. It, you pivoted <laughs> and it exploded. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's where the real startup started was a couple of years ago. You want to share that story? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when we started founding what the, at the time called Vantage Properties, it was really just to provide the same information to enable um, investment in real estate. Now, getting into the tech space was really amazing in that we can scale, we can grow um, a bit more and provide a much more customized um, service that actually serves the risk management um, aspect of funding for the financial institutions. That's really where we tapped into something that um, can grow and something that makes a difference in the continent. And when Catalytic Africa came in, it was just at that time that we needed um, because the cycle of getting your banks in, um, the sales cycle, it takes forever. Um, and um, Catalytic Africa, the funding actually helped us carry through until we're able to close those deals and actually help us build um, the, our solution in a way that um, fits what the banks um, were particularly looking for. Um, and yeah, it was really, really helpful. It, it, it gave us that breath that we need, the last breath that we needed to get to where we are. Fantastic. Just so you're aware, okay, Mithri is here and she's super proud of you. Thanks, Mithri. Much appreciated. Thank you. Now, um, I just wanted to tell the audience, this is why we're here, okay? It's the hubs and the angels backing startups. It's that simple, but it's at the crux of everything Catalytic is about. So I hope you're ready. Next up, Mustafa, I know you're here. Hi. Next. Do you hear me? Can me? We can just about hear you. Okay, so um, salam alaikum. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Mustafa. I used to be an engineer. Uh, 
a farmer and uh, a middleman between farmer and end user. Uh, we uh, every farmer in Fortuna in Sudan um, between the farmer and consumer in vegetables. There are three to five layers of middlemen. Those middlemen came with their cost, as they triple and fourth of um, prices of tomato. For example, if you have a tomato with 10 SDG from farmer, it will be like 50 or, or 80 SDG to the end user. So we started our first business uh, of Turkey. Uh, it was B2C uh, model. Uh, we delivered. Uh, um, we deliver vegetables and fruits on delivery. Uh, we use an application, website, and a WhatsApp chat. So basically, we need to have a, a, a higher volume of vegetables. So we eliminate those middlemen and buy directly from farmer. Um, six months ago, we pivoted flying right now uh, businesses. We supply supermarkets, we supply um, restaurants like, like Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut, Venice, we supply. Uh, catering companies, so we have a bigger volume. So uh, right now we are um, supplying many items from Pharma directly. Uh, after we we got, we have this volume and uh, we have stable volume, we will we'll go again to the B2C model. So we'll, uh, at that time we will we'll use again the application and chatbot and deliver directly to home deliver. So we got. Our first, our vision, which is um, buying directly from farmer and, and getting uh, directly to the end user and consumer. Um, um, I'm solopreneur. Started three years ago. We have a 10, 10 full time employees. We have uh, six uh, employees part time. Uh, at the end of 2022, we have an impressive increase in, uh, in revenue from uh, from 58. Uh, uh, USD to 150 that came from pivoting to the B2B business. Um, and uh, we didn't get the, the, the fund yet, but with the investment, the 50K from, from Mr. Mendy, the, the angel investor, uh, we, um, we have the capacity to, to have the, the operating income and to have the operation cost that we need to, to use uh, for B2B business. Uh, we are waiting for the vending process to end. Uh, we, uh, we are planning with, uh, with the fund to have uh, a bigger capacity to operate for more B2B business, to have a bigger volume and buying directly from farmer. And after that, we will start again the B2C model, which, uh, we, we, which is the vision from the start, uh, will enable a, a many Jobs that created by delivery and um, processing, and etc. So thank you. Wow! Bang on time. Thank you, Mustafa. Um, thank you. And I hope you all were listening. Those who are saying Sudan, so you see, we got startups in Sudan. Um, Mustafa, Koroji uh, has been working with Savannah Innovation. Yeah. What's that like? Can you tell people here about Savannah Innovation Hub and you know what it's like working with them? Yes, uh, Savannah is a, a hub here in Sudan. I uh, used to, to, to deal with Yusuf. Yusuf is a, the, the founder of Savannah. Uh, he was there for, with me from the, the first day on Catalytic Fund. He used to, to uh, the, the ecosystem here in Sudan is not that. Uh, Mature uh, or in the, in the starting phase. So uh, we have a lot of uh, challenges uh, on, on the QIC process, by the way. We, we used to be informal business, and in the last year we, we, we converted. So this is this is challenges. Um, it needs someone that can help, and someone have a network, uh, and that's seven actually. Seven help us. Well, that, I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to highlight that fact. And I know every single one of you here has worked with an innovation hub and you are listening. Lean on them and continue. Don't think because oh, I'm no longer part of their program. Not only ABAN and AfriLabs, but our international development partners also work directly with the hubs to ensure that when it comes to programs that the knowledge transfer comes through the hubs. 
So especially when you look at things like processes, procedures, governance, capacity development, business development, and other areas, um, are, as you advance, don't just think the OBS are no longer able to help. Tap into them, you know, as you go along. Um, any questions for Mustafa before I let him go? Oh, by the way, Mustafa, well done. Uh, 10 full-time employees, six part-time, thumbs up. And I know you're assessing SDGs one, two, and eight, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. Any questions for Mustafa? Oh, wow. We've got a very mild audience here today. Okay. Well, look, here's, here's, um, Here's my question. You know, I mean, you've got Pizza Hut, Debonair's Pizza, you know, all the people that require fresh food and you're doing digital disintermediation. Do you really believe this can scale on the continent? And if so, why? Um, yes. Uh, oh, all of those um, restaurants have to deal with, with local suppliers. The local suppliers are very traditional. They are uh, one who is um, a trader in the market and he he's just uh, do what deliver what they want but uh, they can't scale they they um, they should be someone that is a corporate company that that you can rely on so uh, i believe that uh, restaurants in, in africa and all supermarkets also uh, need someone to rely a company that is focused on vegetables and fruits, especially when it came from from farmer direct. So yes, uh, I believe that uh, we have a challenge, of course, but but I guess that the future is is bright. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Titi. Good. Good. Much appreciated. Right. Next up, Mr. Channels. The legal eagle from South Africa. Are you with us? Yeah, so Jack had to drop off. He had some connection issues, but we can come back to him. Okie dokie. All right. If he comes, he comes. Safia, are you here with us? Hello. We're going back to Sudan. We've yes, welcome to Sudan. <laughs> it's the Sudan time. Okay. All right, your five yes. minutes starts now. Okay, my name is Safiya Muhammad. I'm um, a polyglot. Uh, I speak four different languages and I have, I'm, I'm very passionate about uh, learning and teaching languages. Uh, in 2020, I co-founded uh, Mango Gate when I saw my friends who were teachers suffering from, like they wanted to teach uh, their students and the students want to, to be connected to teachers, but all uh, our institutes here were offline. So um, I co-founded Mango Get firstly as a marketplace to connect uh, language teachers with students. And thereafter, we figured out, no, there is another problem, which is the content itself. So right now we provide uh, language courses, customized as well as standard, um, like there are live sessions cert with certified teachers that we train and um, we focus on scalability, flexibility, accessibility, flexibility, as well as enjoyment. So we teach people the practical language, not just like uh, the bookish way you need to move from level one to level two. To so we innovate a new way of teaching languages. Uh, so this is our platform, it's called Mango Gate. And uh, we're two co-founders. Uh, I'm the one who is responsible for the like the business development part. And there is Mohanet who is specialized in education. Um, since we started, like uh, we've like we didn't invest in marketing. We were just like trying to figure out the exact like uh, the solution market fit, not just the. Oops, looks like we're losing you. So, okay, you're back. Yeah. So, yeah. 
we offer courses in more than nine languages, but we have like main five languages that people want to learn. Um, right now, we are developing our platform. It was uh, before the fund because we didn't have any fund in the beginning. So uh, with our angel investor fund, we we are now developing our platform. So it was just the, the first phase was just for like booking the courses, showcasing the services. But right now people can have their sessions inside. And uh, we also added the, the flexibility because we figured out that our customers needs more flexible models. So yes, the new one, which is going to be published by the end of uh, April, uh, is going to be like focusing on the, the whole experience like uh, to provide um, a very good language learning experience to our students as well as our teachers. Okay. Um, and while we were like, while we were working, we figured out that no, we're not only saving Sudan, like 30% of our like orders come from Saudi Arabia, Emirates. And so right now we're working on like making our service uh, perfect so that we can scale up to other uh, like countries in Middle East as well as North Africa, basically Arabic speaking countries. All right, fantastic. Thanks a lot for sharing that. Um, now, Mustafa has talked to us about um, what it's like working with Savannah Innovation, but you also work with Terra B, right? Yeah. So tell us about Terra B and how they've helped you along. Um, like my, my angel investor, like, um, like I, I remember like, uh, seven or six uh, months ago, I went to an event. It's Africa. And it was my first event meeting other investors and there was a competition there. And suddenly I found that I, I became like the most, like I have been given the award of most promising entrepreneur in North Africa. I was surprised because I haven't like, uh, tried to, to, uh, like to, to bring investment to my uh, my company because you know Sudan has so many issues when it comes to uh, like investors and uh, the political issues and there's is some challenges so Terabi was uh, my my angel investor was from Terabi because he's the the one believed in, uh, in our startup mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like yeah, so, they helped me a lot in like uh, no. They help a lot in securing funds to startups. Okay, yeah. Um, unfortunately, you were breaking up a bit there, but I think what I heard you say is they've helped you beyond just securing funds. Is that correct? Yes. Fantastic. Um, does anybody have any questions for Safia? Okay, they don't, but I have one last question for you. Um, yeah. All of us are raving about how chat GPT and AI are taking yes. over. And we all know about natural language processing and all of that stuff. The question is, you know, are you training your AI on any African languages? Um, yes. So let me tell you something. What Chat GPT is doing and what AI is doing is helping human beings like achieve their goals. First mm -hmm. of all, when it comes to la language learning experience, because we're focusing on this, uh, you find that uh, service providers in the future are, are no longer being like uh, teachers. They're going to be just like a moderator. Uh, to your learning experience. So we are trying to see the, the next, uh, like the next educational wave so that we, like we can develop something that's matching our students. Right now we are finalizing like a contract with uh, one of the, the, like the Hindi agencies. They have like um, an assessment uh, for language courses. So the, the assessment is going to be through AI. So we are trying to, Yes, to look uh, at what is next, and then we we embrace it, and we just like 
uh, development. Not to forget mentioning the content is no longer like in the past. So when we started, we were just like giving people standard courses and we figured Mm. There are okay. other pain points, and when yeah. we make we we lost you there again, uh, Safia. Things Sorry that, about that. We um, focus on R and D. Yeah, we Thank focus on R and D. Yes. Okay. Thank you very very much for that, uh, Safia. Much appreciated. Thank right, you. Aki, are you here? Mr. Braceway. Right here, sir. Can you see me? Not yet, but I'm quite sure the team will spotlight you, and there you are. Hi, everyone. All right, Akin. Thanks for coming. Your five minutes starts now. Thank you for having me, and uh, it's great to be here in the company of everybody else like ourselves. Uh, I have a background in telecoms. I worked with uh, MTN, which I hope everybody in Africa knows about communications. And uh, Kasuku really came just right after my stint at MTN. And it's really a company that has um, done very exciting things in terms of customer engagement, which is my forte. Uh, every business, uh, and including those of us here, really needs Kasuku uh, because essentially what Kasuku does is it looks after the aspect of acquiring customers, growing your customers, and of course, customer retention, which is very, very key to any business on the planet. And so what we've done is basically to try to enable that customer engagement through technology. Um, so we do a lot in terms of both the connectivity, connecting the B2B with their uh, customers as well, and then we also ensure that there are the critical integrations. So you could say we are the essential services that provides the ability to handle your customers. And of course, in this new world of doing it anywhere. So certain point from a growth point, a business is going to need what we offer because after a while, you really need to be able to face the business you're doing without having to contend with how you make it all gel together in terms of how your customers want to engage with you, um, both in terms of voice messaging. So any which way that you can imagine that a customer needs to engage with the business is really what we look after. Uh, and we're also now pivoting to advisory to be able to not just sell you an off the shelf, but to enable a discussion to flow out of that. So if a, co a company needs bespoke, then we'll do it. I operate out of Nigeria uh, as one of the co-founders, and um, we've really been able to extend our reach to other African countries because what the technology also does is that it's in the cloud and it enables access via the cloud. So when you think in terms of um, those needing call centers, um, those who have desk uh, equipment, all of that can be done away with. And so we managed to deploy small, big, and now we've pivoted to larger customers. And our business tends to really look at uh, various verticals in pretty much every sector that you can imagine. Uh, catalytic funding has really helped us in terms of what we weren't looking at before. Uh, being able to reposition the brand, look at developing a website, social media marketing, and of course now moving from small uh, businesses to now take care of the enterprise layer of business. So we're excited about where we have come from. We came out of the troubled uh, 2020 COVID era, and now we're really, really excited about what the future portends. Thank you. Thank you, Akin. You left a minute on the table so we can ask you good questions. Oh, come on, guys. No questions for Akin. Uh, let's have some questions in chat. Okay. The whole idea is uh, for you to discover each other 
but while we're waiting for questions, um, I have uh, I have one for you. Um, how many people do you guys have? Okay, so we have fourteen right now, and uh, we're looking forward to growing that as we now expand with bigger and more uh, complex customers. Okay, thank you. So fourteen jobs created there. Nice. Now, Sethabia wants to know: Do you plan? Uh, on connecting with existing platforms? Oh, yes, indeed. Um, what we've discovered is that this is the global world is really exploding. And to that extent, uh, we are integrating, of course, with uh, the likes of CRM providers, because when you are handling your customers, you also now need to look after the customer information. Uh, so CRM is beginning to become a real big um, almost like an imperative for most companies. So what we're doing now is that the system is now integrating with various CRMs. Uh, okay. And then there are other partnerships, of course, in place. Yeah. I will at least be here because people now want to know, and we've just run out of time, what are your regional expansion plans and what is the big vision for Kasuku? Okay, we do handle uh, customers, South Africa, East Africa. Um, we are looking, of course, to the North African. Um, so I think we did handle one customer in Sudan at some point. So if there's opportunities to also now put our footprint uh, in the ground there, Ghana, of course, uh, we do have customers uh, trading out of Ghana. Uh, we are very, very ambitious, you know, in terms of, because it's a cloud system. We really can go anywhere. So wherever your business is, we can serve you. Uh, we have no problems at all you, serving you. You got to look in chat then. Yusuf wants to follow up with you. And Vua wants you know to know um, if you've just totally stopped serving small companies and SMEs or you still do them with corporates. Oh, great. Um, so what we've done now is that um, we are creating what we call the Kasuku Light. Uh, that Kasuku Light will enable us to really now serve the smaller, uh, the smaller type of segment, because then uh, we are a high touch organization. So in terms of helping customers to roll into the cloud, uh, it really requires some support, level of support. But with Kasuku Light, we believe that the smaller SMEs should be able to serve themselves, um, you know, with a few clicks here and there, and then bang, you are, you're on your way to creating your own small um, call center, which really uh, we believe everybody needs. If you want to keep your customers, you must really think about uh, customer engagement, yes. So we're okay serving the SMEs with, with a smaller version of Kasuku. Thank you very much, Akin. Uh, and I know there may be more questions. You guys, the whole idea is that, is to start these conversations going because the AFCFTA is upon us. And those borders, they may not come down in this generation, but they're, you know, they're heading that way. So have fun. Right, next up, Laurent. Hello, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Good. So I'm Laurent from Yokobok. Uh, Yokobok is now a social reselling marketplace. Um, I okay, think we're it, starting now. Go ahead. So I was saying that Yokobok is a social reselling marketplace. Uh, I think uh, in all our different markets, uh, we know a lot of ladies that are selling in social network like Instagram, WhatsApp, etc. Um, they face generally they face three types of issues. They have a limited portfolio of products. They generally sell uh, 20 products, 20 SKUs. They don't have very competitive price. Uh, and they face a product quality issue uh, because they have suppliers that are providing them with uh, products that are not corresponding to the pictures or things like that. Um, this is where uh, our new application Superlinger comes in. So we offer to, to uh, thousands of ladies the opportunity to start uh, a retail business without investment. Uh, we are offering them access to our e-commerce infrastructure. So they have access to 3,000 SKUs um, at price 10% below, uh, below market price. 
And all what they have to do is to share the products they choose in their uh, social networks to set up their price, uh, to take orders, and then Nyokobok handles everything from um, payment to delivery. Um, and so for them, it's access to products, it's access to tech, but the, the best superlingers have access to training, classroom training, online training, and uh, health insurance. Um, so we are operating from Senegal for the moment. Um, we, have a we are a company that has a strong experience in e-commerce. We have already a 1 million euro revenue and are operating a break even. And on this new uh, business line, the social commerce, we are growing at uh, 50 uh, 50 percent per month. We already have uh, 50 uh, resellers. Um, and, uh, and that's it for the moment. So our target is to have uh, 11,000 resellers uh, within five years. And, um, and I think that's it. So uh, regarding SDGs, we are, of course, uh, in stimulation of entrepreneurship and uh, gender equality. Uh, and I would like to, uh, so I would like to say that uh, this would not have been possible uh, without Catalytic Africa, because Catalytic Africa helped us a lot in terms of leverage. So the, the, the Catalytic Africa investment and then grants uh, allowed us to match funds to take uh, grants and then to take access to other business angels. So uh, the, this, this has been instrumental. Even if we didn't get the money yet, the signal has been instrumental. Um, and I would like to, uh, to take the opportunity to thank the ABAN team in supporting us in the, on all the KYC process, etc. And, uh, and I think this is what I wanted to share with you uh, today. Thank you again. Okay. Fantastic. Well, um, Laurent, I don't know if you've been in the middle of the challenges with uh, the Dakar Network Angels and Joko Labs. How's that working for you? So um, Dakar is a Dakar is a strong ecosystem. Uh, we've been around for the, the last... DNA, the network, the, the the angels themselves. Which angel in DNA are you working with in terms of so, the Dakar Network Angels? So our our investor uh, was uh, initially was Philip, uh, but we know a lot of uh, we we know a lot of people within the network that have been assisting us that with uh, with advice. Uh, like Julien, um, so a lot of them, or Marcus, a lot of them have helped us uh, with advice, even the ones that I've not invested yet uh, in uh, Nyokobok. Right. I want to educate everybody here because of what you just said. All right. I charge $1,000 an hour, all right, to corporates, and I then discount that for other people. The reason I bring that up is people talk about investment of cash, not recognizing angels time investment as an investment. And that's one of the things I want you to take away from here is just that conceptual model that time is money. Time is money. A lot of people don't think about it that way, but especially when you are starting your business at the beginning, let me see if I can break it down. You're trying to raise funds. You spend an hour with an angel. They run through your deck and you have to restructure your deck. You now restructure it and get funding. How much was that time worth? You get the point I'm making. Now, um, Laura, I, I can confirm, TD. I, I think it's a, it's a very, very good point. And without my experience on this, I, I, I may have to say that maybe I wouldn't have trusted you. I mean, I wouldn't have agreed on the point, but I went through it. Um, you, you have people that can transform your vision, the way you see the business, make connection or support you. And, uh, and yes, indeed, we, we've been through that. Uh, we 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 had great angels, uh, even that even they didn't put cash, uh, mm -hmm. they helped us a lot. Exactly, and that is the nature of angel investing. And I I I, I trust the people are under. That's what I'm hoping we're highlighting here is the value of the angel 
to startups is beyond the 5,000, 2,000, 10,000 that they give you. Plus, TD, if I may, the, the credibility and the trust uh, they, they provide you. Um, I mean, so some angels are, let's, let's say, a great brand to have. I want they, they, I they, they will help you a lot to leverage. So um, before you depart, and I know we're getting behind on time, but I'm enjoying myself and I hope you guys are too. Um, June wants to know, you know, you're talking e-commerce here. How have you built customer trust? Because trust is a scarce commodity on the continent. Um, we, we did that by owning the full e-commerce infrastructure. So we built Nyokobok uh, by, uh, I mean, from inventory to last mile delivery, we do everything. Now, now that we have been able to do everything, we, uh, we are a bit more comfortable uh, with outsourcing bits of it. But again, when we started, we made everything ourselves. So we know all the value chain by heart. We are focusing on quality. Uh, and, and we, we learned how to do everything from warehousing to last mile delivery. So it, it's really it's really about providing quality and to provide quality in, in nascent ecosystems. Sometimes you have to build a value chain yourself, which takes time, but which I think happens to be a great asset at the end. Excellent point. Thank you very much. On that note, I got to move on. And up next, Michelle, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Um, let me just turn awesome. on my video. Awesome. Over to you. Hi, everyone. I, my name is Michelle. I'm the founder of Reviews. Uh, Reviews is a Zambian online construction marketplace. And um, as you can see, we connect home builders who are building residential property to vetted, experienced service providers across a wide range of construction service categories. So that's your plumbers, your builders, your carpenters, your electrician, all the different services that you need to start and finish building a house. Um, Reviews currently exists as a website. We don't yet have a mobile app, but this is in our product roadmap. And we have a team of five very young and very energetic and passionate uh, uh, people working to solve the problem of, you know, on the service provider side, you have individuals and small businesses who are a target customer who struggle to fill up their calendar because they don't have the skills to market themselves or put themselves out there despite having the, the technical skills and experience to do the work. And on the home builder side, I think there's such a there's such a broad range of service providers doing different things that it's very hard for someone to find the right service provider who's reliable, who knows what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of problems like poor quality of work, non-payment of work, and just fraud happen. And like you were saying, there's this, um, there's just a lack of trust in this space, especially. So we're looking to solve this problem for both sides um, by having this platform where we have service providers that are vetted. They go through our due diligence process before going onto the platform, and they have their profiles with ratings, reviews uh, from past customers, photos of works they've done, and you know bits about their experience and things like this. And as they do more work, they continue being reviewed, rate, rated and reviewed, and they continue going to due diligence. And so um, we currently have 97 active service providers on the platform across a wide range of service categories. And we've had 271 people use the platform. Um, and we, our current retention is 34%. And just due to the complexity of early stage marketplaces, uh, we are deliberately constrained to only work in Lusaka, Zambia. And once we get to a certain point of marketplace liquidity, we then plan to expand to other geographies. So um, we've only just received our catalytic funding this week. So we're quite excited and, and ready to hit the ground running. We're planning to do a lot of interesting things around improving the user experience for both service providers and um, service users, because it goes beyond just making the connection between the two people. So we're building out a web app that manages the engagement during the service provision. That way we, we are providing now a solution, not just to connect people, but to, to manage the process all the way until the service has been provided. And so there's lots of interesting things we're doing in there to, 
to bring additional value to both sides and it creates lots of great opportunities for us and the market. Mm. So yeah, happy to take any questions, happy to, to hear from what other people think. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask an obvious question, if it's not obvious to everybody. Now, you're a female founder. I am. What's I'm a female that? solo founder. And uh, sorry? I'm a female solo founder. Exactly. Um, how's that working given the context of the Bongo Hive experience? Do you mean uh, having gone through a female tech uh, accelerator through Bongo Hive? Okay, All absolutely. Right. Um, yeah, so the way that I sort of got connected to Bongo Hive, well, I've been a fan and a follower for many years. But I participated in Standard Chartered Bank's Women in Tech program that was focusing on supporting um, women running tech businesses or taking over businesses. And it was a really interesting learning experience to sort of step outside of your business and look at it from a more strategic point of view. And I think it helped us sort of work out how to get from, you know, version one, sort of from zero to one, right? Thinking through what are the steps that need to happen in order to, to get from 97 service providers to get to a thousand. And I think there's a lot that we've learned now that we're lo like looking forward to like implementing and seeing how we improve the whole process for both sides of the marketplace. Fantastic. Now, what have been some of the challenges? This is from June. Thanks, June. You, we can, you can hang out with me anytime. What have been some of the challenges you've faced with getting set up? Um, I think one of the things like getting set up with running a tech business is that is the tech itself, right? Uh, we are operating in a market where I think there's very low tech adoption in Zambia so far, but also the specific demographic that we work with, you know, plumbers, carpenters, electricians are not super tech savvy. So we've yep. had to enter the market with a very low tech uh, solution. And so it's sort of working out how do we keep rebuilding the product to work for our users, but also to find the sweet spot between tech and, and human support. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of iterations that we've made in the process uh, along the way and things that we can again use tech to to automate and scale up. Fantastic. Michelle, thanks a lot for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. Keep up the great work and keep us posted on progress. Will do. Good. Thank you, you take care. Next up. Patrick, are you here? Mr. Timani. Yes, I'm there. Okay. Camera. Hi, everyone. Alonzi. <laughs> Thank you, to Tommy Davis. So, hi, everyone. I'm Patrick Timani from Cameroon. Um, yes, I'm CEO and co-founder of, of B. B is the lending platform who, are, who want to democratize the lending services to the undeserved or unbanked uh, people. So um, we create this company with my co-founder and CTO, Vivian Sarun, that we work together in Germany while I make my study. And uh, since, since three weeks, we uh, hire an ex Country manager of, of Goze Togo, who joined us as co founder and COO, uh, Ms., Mrs. Grace uh, Sota. What we try to solve is um, in Cameroon, uh, there are around uh, 2 million motorcycle drivers taxi, and most of them have access to the asset financing. So they have only one option to rent the bike with unlimited time. So well, and then we, we offer the solution that they can rent, they can rent own models from us. They can get bike and they can work for, to the riding platform. Um, since now we already unlocked 800,000 debt to them, and uh, most 400, 400 drivers already finished to, to, to repay. We have uh, a repayment rate of 93 percent. How? Because uh, we are building our own credit scoring system to reduce the risk of default payment. We are using the rallying behaviors data, GPS data, payment data to analyze the profile of the drivers if they can pay or not. In October, to, in, 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 
In, in, in October 2022, we have been backed by Google Black Funders Fund, where we got 200K as fake equity fund. And then uh, we signed also a deal with the IoT uh, US company who can who help us to reduce the to recover the bike when the driver don't repay. So we implemented the uh, API for the DPS so that when the guy don't don't pay, the bank will be blocked and when they repay, the bank will be directly active. And uh, we signed since uh, four weeks a deal with a, a US uh, asset financing uh, platform on tap. Mm -hmm. to unlock 1.3 million dollars for us to to deploy 2000 bike this year how we have support for ecatalytic so uh thanks again for active space help in, in cameroon in Douala, where we have been uh, get a lot of support from rebecca nation Steve tumba uh Tamak, they help us to uh, first have some access to, to, to the bank with the bank we have a, a better deal they also help us to shape our business model. And now we plan to have our own microfinance license because we want to increase our portfolio for services like um, uh, say buy now, pay later, save now, pay later of services, uh, lending, loan, saving, uh, to even to other uh, uh, people, n not only the, the, the um, motor mo 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 cycle drivers. We are already uh, operate in GRC in Kinshasa. We have a team in, in India, our, our tech team. And we also have uh, a plan to, to, to scale up in Togo, in Senegal, in the Ivory Coast. We plan also to, to increase our portfolio with the, with the second hand car, because we figure that uh, most people, most, most, most tax drivers don't drive their own car. And then instead to offer them a new car like other startups, we we understood that it's better to 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 get a second hand car and reconcile re, this car to reduce the emission of CO2. So uh, we are still working hard to 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 raise our Serie A uh, end this year, and we're happy to get uh, some uh, some some advice from you to me, to how to improve our business model. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Patrick, uh, for that. Very very insightful. Uh, correct me if I, how many people do you have now? You had 25 when you applied and yes. you, you are the first, you know, uh, applicant we go. In fact, you are the first catalytic disbursement we did. Yeah. Uh, I still remember that because uh, you've got a very proactive angel in uh, Rebecca Enonchong and uh, the Cameroon Angel Network. Um, I think it's Surge and that lot, right? Yeah. 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 So... How many people now? Now we have 58 full time. 58 full time and, and 26 people as, as a part time. We have a sales team who go on the street to onboard other motorcycle drivers. Yeah. Wow. So you doubled quite literally. Exactly. 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 Now you see, um, Fadila, I hope you're listening. This is the point I'm trying to raise and I'm trying to make to a lot of um, the people we're talking about about the impact these founders are having on the continent. We've right. just heard of over 20 new jobs being created in a 12 month period. That's economic impact. So um, if you're listening and you're a founder, don't let anybody dissuade you. Build the company that's in your heart. You're helping humankind first and foremost, okay, by creating. And that's what this is all about. That's why we're supporting this. We're building a better Africa. And guess what? It's not TD building it. It's you guys. Yeah. My role is support. I'm just a support system to help you do what it is you are doing. And all of you rock, every single one of you. That's why we're showcasing. Thanks a lot, Patrick. Thank you. Um. Oh, sorry. Um, if I heard correctly, your tech team is in India. Is there a plan to move your tech to the continent? If so, yeah. what, what what would take you to do so? Uh, because um, we think long term, long term goal. You know, um, my situation is for India, but we figure that um, first the time, the time difference. 
when we when we when we walk the India is is five five to thirty uh, uh, time difference not easy to to manage my take there. And secondly, we secondly we want to we want to customize the the application based on our of our behaviors, our culture in Africa. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we are, we are still we, we still work with people in India, but uh, we plan to hire people in Cameroon so that we can we can have a share knowledge with Cameroon team, GLC team, and in India. Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah. knowledge transfer is imminent. Thank you very much, Patrick. Appreciate it. You know, you. keep up the great work. Thank you very much. All right. You left her behind. You didn't bring her. Okay, Kashik. I'll let you. Are you here? I know Evan isn't and can't join us. Kashik, are you here? Mr. Rathod, you go. I I am here. Okay, well. Good to see you. All right, you got five here. minutes starting now. She is here, actually. She, I believe she is listening to us. She's on the road, so she won't be yeah, she uh, can't participate. Well, she won't be participating. Exactly. No, but fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I thought I was going to be the last one because of the name Hugo, but nevertheless. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Kaushik, Kaushik Rathod. Uh, along with my wife, Ivani, we founded Yugo in uh, 2018. Yugo, in its core, is a, it's a, it's a taxi booking application with its services provided exclusively by registered Mauritian taxis. Uh, it is a first and still the only real-time uh, app in Mauritius. Uh, one of our key achievements, or not, not one, but uh, Yugo by itself is an achievement in Mauritius uh, due to the regulatory landscape. However, uh, achievements like uh, transparent pricing, uh, digital payments, data and user security in terms of in-app calling, chats, uh, SOS features, et cetera. The, reasons why, the reason why I mark these as achievements is due to the fact that it never existed prior to Yugo. We were the first ones to actually bring it. Currently, currently in uh, in Russia, there isn't uh, there isn't a, a pricing structure as such with regards to transportation or taxis in general. Um, our vision with Yugo uh, was was for us not just to digitalize the the taxi sector, the taxi industry in general, but for us to also be for Yugo to be a one stop super transport app. Sorry, I'm getting some feedback. I think somebody is uh, online. If you're not speaking, can you please mute? Okay, go ahead. Right, so going back. Uh, so yes, our vision with Yugo was... was Is that good? All right. So our vision with Yugo was not just to digitalize uh, uh, the taxi industry or the taxi sector, but for us, for Yugo, to be a one-stop uh, transport super app in Mauritius. Um, since we've launched, uh, we have then added additional features like car rentals, uh, which, which gives you a transparent uh, uh, opportunity for users to actually see transparent pricing and choose their rentals from the app from a different list of vendors. Then we added the corporate services whereby corporates can now take advantage of using taxis for their staff, especially if they're late night, uh, early mornings, et cetera. Um, apart from that, yes, we, there are, again, the vision was always for Yugo to be a super uh, transport app. And thank you, uh, Catalytic Africa, because this is, this is what we are doing with it now. We are working towards realizing that vision whereby we are adding additional services like uh, pet transfers, uh, concierge services, half day, full day rentals, uh, and even uh, um, chauffeur, just, just chauffeur services on the app. So yes, this is, uh, it is working towards, uh, I mean, we are working towards realizing our vision and uh, thank you very much, Catalytic Africa and Afri Labs for this, 
for this amazing opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Kashik. Now, um, I have a couple of questions. Yes, please. Um, employ, you know, you said you've been able to employ staff. What's your FTE now? Correct. I mean, uh, since we've launched, this was in 2018, it was just me and my wife. And finally, uh, since, since we got the funding as well, we were then able to employ two, two additional staff. We are actually on the way to employ two additional as well uh, in the next couple of months. So we have that in our budget. So yes, our current strength is four, uh, looking at going to what, six in, uh, in three months time. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing. Um, any questions for Kashik um, from the co-conspirators? That's what I'm calling all of you guys. They are conspiring to build Africa. How dare you? Whoops. <laughs> any questions? Because um, Mauritius... Um, in in um, Mauritius, the dominant player is La Place Factory, and you worked with them, right? Correct, correct. They have been absolutely instrumental. I mean, to the point where, where I can share this, actually, to the point that if not for them and the Angel Network, we would not exist currently. That's 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 how instrumental they were. So yes, absolutely brilliant. Uh, can, can you tell us? I'm more particular then. Okay, tell us about more angels then. You know, more angels. Uh, nothing no, I mean, uh, the place. Okay, nothing about, you know, hey, I'm a band. I'm not at Free Labs. So let's know about no, more, what did more angels do that blew you away? No, absolutely. Uh, first things first, uh, they, they kept us alive, for lack of better words. But yes. Um, Mo Angels actually is one of the first uh, angel network, well, one of the first angel networks in Mauritius because they, it's still a very fresh market as compared to compared to other African con countries. But yes, Mo Angels, uh, they had actually looked into almost thirty or forty startups here, and we were the ones that were chosen, or rather, they they actually believed in our vision uh, with Hugo, and it was key because at that time we had. We had almost run out. Right? In fact, we had burnt all we had, hmm. and uh, and more angels came to our rescue along with uh, Laplace Factory. And it, it's brilliant that you know uh, angels like more angels and and the network that they had actually believed in the vision that we had. So brilliant, fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that. Um, Pleasure. I really appreciate it, Mr. Paul. Are you with us? Yes, I am. All right. Fantastic. Your five minutes are going to start yeah. now. Hey, hi, everyone. I am Joseph Paul. I'm the CEO and co-founder from Daum Kononi. Daum Kononi is a Swahili phrase meaning medicines at your palm. And we're a pharmaceutical company innovating around the supply chain. So did you know that health facility owners in the African communities usually spend six to eight hours in the process of procuring medicines? They have to travel all the way to the marketplace and they have to also um, get on public transportation, which is usually quite difficult, carry bulk of cash since it's a B2B uh, business. And all these processes usually at some point reduce the quality of medicines in case of cold chain, broken bottles, and spending a lot of hours in the process. So we thought, how about we create a convenient way of procurement? Someone can just order their medicines from the hospital or from their pharmacies through the mobile phone uh, in, a, in a more convenient manner. So we made an app. It's available in iOS and Android and it has made life more easier. It has actually cut down a lot of cost, a lot of time spent in procurement, and we have gone further to deploy data-driven and analytical systems that would usually analyze the procurement behavior of the customers and would advise them on better inventory management systems and credit financing. So we have uh, launched our application last year in January, 
We are currently in Tanzania only, and we have a vision of growing into other markets of the landlord countries around Tanzania, as since we supply most of the medicines to them. So we do this B2B business, and we have a markup of about 10%, with the potential of growing to up to 30%. So what makes us special is we are data-driven, and we have... Uh, we are also doing some sort of financial inclusion as well, as we have integrated almost all payment systems and have made payments quite easier in the market. Mm. So our management team consists of five people with over 20 years of experience. We have employed full-time employees of 25 and part-time employees of 11. And uh, since last year until today, we have over 700 active customers with a total revenue of close to 600,000 USD in the, in the platform. And um, yes, yeah, so we are also thankful to Catalytic Africa. We are waiting, we are waiting to receive uh, grants soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. What are June again? What are the challenges of growing and how big can this business get? How do you become profitable? Yes, so um, the challenges of growing from a Tanzanian point of view is uh, it's a little bit difficult raising funds in some of the countries. We are a little bit hidden for some reason. and. Uh, that is one of the issues we, uh, as a startup, we mostly face: lack of funding that will help us scale in a bigger, in a bigger fashion. And um, how big the business can get? And to be honest, geographically, this business can can get really big because most of the medicines come through the Dar es Salaam port in Tanzania, and then they get redistributed to the landlord countries around us about six countries in total. So we have a vision of creating one of the largest distribution uh, channels to all these countries and get, to, get them to be more data-driven and more efficient. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for that answer. Now, um, if, if we look at the journey which you know you've come through which is it looks quite uh impressive and i believe for so how many people do you now have currently uh we have 25 full-time and 11 part-time okay so that's an additional five from you know when you applied even without funding yes wow. and and we were thinking of using the funding mostly in the improving like to do more trainings for our employees so mm -hmm. that they can be more efficient and more uh, good at their job and also a little bit increasing the sales team since right. we have a very small sales team and we want to start uh, scaling up to graphical um you worked with wv angels yes you did right you know yes. um what was that like to be honest, among all stake, stakeholders who have we have been working with, we have found the greatest potential in growing with Rioba Ventures Angels because they have opened doors that we thought would be impossible to open. They have played roles of advisory since they have been right in the market for quite uh, quite some time. So it has been more than just funding to us. And uh, it's like people you look up to. So we are quite grateful for the opportunity to work with uh, WV Angels. Thank you very much. And, you know, that, that is so heartwarming to hear. You cannot begin to imagine because um, we're working as a network of networks to try and make sure that these things happen. Okay, the only valid that's why we're going with the data validation. The only validation we get nowadays is listening and hearing from people like yourselves as to what angels on ground are, you know, <clears throat> actually doing. Um, does anybody have 
additional any questions for Joseph? I mean, him and Hazem in uh, Tanzania. I'm I'm quite impressed. Um, the fact I, I I do know Tan. In fact, uh, a little secret most of you won't know is that Catalytic actually started in Tanzania. Did you know that? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, you know what happened was. Um, I was invited by Afri Labs, uh, who at that time was chaired by Rebecca Enonchong, um, to visit the Afri. It was my first Afri Labs gathering, and that was in Tanzania. And it was there that we said we've got to do something together and put this together. And um, the result is what you're witnessing today. So, um, both you and Hazem can go back to Tanzania saying, hey, we've contributed to the continent. We yeah. can take some credit for catalytic Africa. Thank yeah. you very, very oh. much, Joseph. And um, I appreciate that. So next up, is Yuri here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, TD. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh... Can you hear me well? Yes, Yuri, we can hear you. Great. Thanks. Nice, and nice your to meet five you. Five minutes are going to start now. Please go ahead. That's a great pleasure to to meet you. I'm Yuri Kelo, the CEO and founder of Wednesday Mobile, which is a B two B food marketplace operating in the DR Congo in Kinshasa. Wednesday Mobile enables retailers in Kinshasa to source local food products, agricultural products which are supplied by small farmers, which are based in the Western part of the country. Most of Kinshasa's population goes to outdoor market to buy their food on a regular basis. And on these markets, they go to small retailers. These small retailers are facing issues to build their inventory, to get reliable suppliers. So our goal is to ease their supply, ease the food and ultimately ease the food access uh, to Kinshasa. So far, we have reached, since, since inception, more than 600 retailers in Kinshasa. On the, on the supplier side, we are working with small farmers um, who are earning $200 a year. So what we aim at doing is to increase the frequency of procurement to this, uh, to this producer to improve their revenue. Our, our ambition is to reach in Kinshasa 2,000 retailers by the end of uh, 2024 and to, uh, to reach um, 500 uh, producers in, in, the, in the countryside. So how, how Catalytic Africa has helped us in, in our operation? Well, first of all, um, what is very uh, key in our, in our business is logistic basically the, the supply chain. We want to optimize the supply chain. And what we have been facing as a challenge is to rely on, rely on par local partners to, to simply um, book long old, uh, long old um, transportation service. This is very uh, challenging. So what we could do with, with, the, with the fund is to increase our own truck fleet to strengthen our logistic and secondly, we could also um, uh, strengthen, uh, strengthen our uh, working capital to, to maintain the service, to maintain the service. Um, so yes, it's, it has been a great pleasure to, to work with, uh, with our partners so far. Um, the DIA who is, was invested with us in the DRC, which is a very early stage market for startup and um, and 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 finally, uh, what we could also achieve, thanks Catalytic Africa, is the visibility to the international um, investment community, and which will help us um, reach our uh, seed round uh, seed round target this year. So yeah, thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you, Yuri. Um, now, you've got about six people working on your team now? So eight, eight now. Eight. So you've got two more since you applied. Yes, yes, yes. All right. 
right. So you're cooking on gas. It's good to hear. All of you, you can hear. I, I think you've heard me sound like a broken record on jobs. But when I go out and I talk and I try and get more money for things like Catalytic, what I'm telling them is what you're doing, which is the truth. Now, just sitting here, let me just do very, very quick math. I've got roughly just in this audience, okay, a couple of hundred jobs that have been created in the last two years. That to me is powerful. And that's why we're here. So well done um, on, on that front. Now, it must be a challenge uh, in terms of the DRC and, and um, functioning there. But I, I do know that although they're newly formed, DRC Impact Angels are doing an interesting job there. Do you want to speak to your experience with um, DRC Impact? Yes, definitely. Well, they have been amazing partners because finding a business angel in the DRC is, is, is very, very challenging. And the risk which they have, they have been ready to take and support us and, and advise us through our growth and connect us to other investor, that's just amazing because now through the connection they have they have put me through, I'm having discussion with bigger VCs, international VCs, and I'm able to sort of highlight the achievement we, we, we could have. And as I see the numbers around here, um, it's very encouraging because the VCs I'm talking about are, are really setting the setting the ambition high. So uh, in DRC, it's because there is not a lot of startups. It's 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 not that easy to say I want to reach one million a year as as ARR. It's very seldom. So the discussion which I'm having, thanks the the DRA, the DRC Impact Angel, is really helping Windsor Mobile to 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 set the ambition high uh, with the international uh, investor. So so yeah, it, it has been amazing to work with them. Thanks, thanks a lot for that, uh, uh, Yuri. And I know for a fact you're tracking SDGs two, eight, and nine. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, do you want to share? Yes, I mean, look, fifteen million inhabitants in 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 Kinshasa, and most of the retailers are making. Uh, less revenue and most of the the supply are done through producers who are who are earning two hundred dollars a year. So this is a highly fragmented supply chain. So we cannot work on this on this uh, on this domain on this sector without taking care of this of this player. They are at the art of the supply chain. So our goal is to empower them. With, with great technical tech product and increase their efficiency and ultimately increase their revenue uh, through our platform. So definitely the SCG is, is, is key for us. Fantastic. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot, uh, Yuri. Um, it is much appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, every good thing has to come to an end. I really want to thank each and every one of you. But before I do that, we missed two people. I call them top and tail. And the reason is very simple. Uh, the northmost co-investment we've done in Africa has been to Tunisia. Uh, that's been Free We, which is run by Moes Betty, um, who unfortunately could not join us. Uh, today and at the bottom of the continent, surprise, surprise, is South Africa, where we've got Jack Channels of uh, Legal Fundy, who also could not join us. So if you think of the continent, everybody else is present except North and South. But let me see if I can run through and do my thank yous properly. First and foremost, from Senegal, Laurent Neokobak. Well done, and thank you very much. Nigeria, Mr. Braithwaite, Kasuku, 
Much, much appreciated. Cameroon, Patrick Timani of Bree. Thanks a lot, you know, for your time and your effort. Um, Safia of Mango Gate and Mustafa of Codology from Sudan. Again, you are appreciated. Yuri, we just heard from you. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Windsor Mobile from DRC. Victor, you thought I was going to forget Kenya, hey? Thanks a lot, Mr. Duca. Appreciate it. Michelle, you're doing an amazing job, okay, with Rivers in Zambia. Keep it up. Thanks a lot. Um, Hazem and Joseph uh, from Tanzania, thanks for the work in Dawa Mukunoni and Sumet Technologies. Really, really appreciate you. And Kashik and Ebony, you guys rock. Okay, you go Mauritius, thumbs up. Last but definitely, definitely not the least, my darling Susebe, go smart, go get them. Thank you for doing what you're doing in Botswana. Most important, I'd like to thank all the angel networks that have contributed to all these amazing founders in doing what they are doing across the continent. It is our pleasure to be associated with all of you. We think you are creating a beautiful African future. We'd like to thank you for that privilege of supporting you in doing so. My name is Tommy Davis. Everybody calls me TD. And I'd like to thank you for being here today.